Well, this particular red, beautiful vintage car, um, I found myself in America. I've been on a holiday trip with my um, girl and down in the south of Florida, we just hit a person um, who is restoring cars accidentally and um, he's restoring this 356 Carrera and these uh, very expensive cars and this was just in his backyards um, and it turned out that the car has no papers and nothing so he wanted to put it on an uh, online auction and was just offering it to me and said if you want to have it um, you can have it and with uh, this couple of euros what I had in my pocket because I was leaving the next day I said well I just have these euros what I have with me and more I don't have and that's the way it is and he said okay how much is it I gave him the euros and he said take it so this was a very um, it was a purchase on very short notice and um, well then we figured out that uh, it's not so easy to get the papers for this car because there was a lien on it which means somebody had his uh, his arms on the car on the title and it was a company and the company went bankrupt so we couldn't ask anybody to get this title and then I went to a lawyer uh, with an email uh, communication. We made this lawyer uh, go into details. And after one and a half years, we got the papers. And after we got the papers, we noticed that this is a German car. Not just from the production, yes, uh, Porsche, of course. But it was delivered first time in uh, Saarbrücken, in Germany, in um, August 1966. So it is a uh, short wheelbase car. In the middle of uh, 1966, it was delivered the first time, um, had a um, German owner. And after a while, I think after 10 years, um, all the documents just got lost and it went overseas. So um, then there is no history about the car anymore until we found it. One of the owners was living in Ohio. This is where all stopped and where the title got lost or where the lien was put on the, on the car. So. Yeah, we picked it up after we got the title, we picked it up, we shipped it overseas, we got it to uh, our production hall and we started to work on it. And um, within eight months, we finished the car. And this is how it looks now, um, in very classy polo red. As I said already, it's a, a short wheelbase car with black interior, polo red outside painting, and everything what you see on the car is exactly the way it was built in 1966. So we made, we were putting it to the original condition, um, how it was uh, produced at the time. Uh, 1966 in April, um, Porsche decided to change the Solex carburetors into Weber carburetors. Um, and as this car was uh, produced afterwards, it already has the Weber uh, carburetors, which most of the people, um, they say they work better. Uh, it's, it's working better with uh, the fuel system. It has 130 horsepower and um, it has a boxer engine um, with two liters which were produced until 1969 until the 2.2 liters started nowadays we even, we can't imagine this it like this anymore it has an aluminium case engine which was built until 1967 um, and the weight of this car is 1080 kilogram which is nothing Of course, it's different to drive these kind of cars, but um, everybody who is racing cars knows how to how to drive such a car. That the uh, that the engine is sitting in the back um, has a lot of benefits, but also disadvantages. Porsche 911. It was coming after the 356, 
which had the same engine in the back. Um, they took the same idea to leave the engine in the back. They just were um, increasing the volume of the and the power of the engine, um, which is still with uh, with with Porsche uh, part of the success history. What they have, they never changed it. They tried it with this Wankelmotor, um, but in the end, Porsche always was stuck to the plan to leave the the engine in the back. What might be important also to know is that. Uh, after the 356, Porsche tried to sell another shape of a car and another style. And they tried to sell in 1964 the first Porsche 911 models, which used to be 901. But they soon figured out that the price of a 911 at that time was almost too much for most of the people to bear. So they developed a 912, which came after the 911. So this was kind of a compromise what they did at the time, because it was the gap between the 356 and the 911 in respect of price was just too big. Um, and therefore they invented this 912, which has the, the same shape, but just a four cylinder engine. And of course, also in the back. Actually, with Porsche, at that time, everything was possible. If you would like to have a pink car, you could get it. And if this pink car should have uh, green leather seats, you could get it as well. Porsche had the idea that everything is possible, which in respect to service in the 1950s and 60s was just amazing. Who was talking about service at that time? Who was thinking about service at that time. So Porsche already said everything has to be possible on request. As soon as somebody is opting for something, we will make it happen. So the color range was uh, limited on the first uh, 911 models, interior and exterior. But as I said, you could have everything at the time. Actually, the feeling what I have with this car is when I see its ass, then I really have to admit that this ass is never changing, you know? This ass always stays the same. And if you have a girlfriend for some years, then you know that this is not like this with your girl. Whatever you do with it, that's just a fact. <laughs> Come on! Come on! Everybody who has seen this car from the back knows that this is just a beautiful, let's call it bottom, to make it more, you know, educated. <laughs>